Hi everyone, I'm Sir Delay, and for this slide set, we will be discussing the standard precaution. Because it is not always possible to know which clients may have infectious organisms, a set of guidelines has been established by the CDC and other organizations outlining steps all healthcare workers must follow to reduce the chances that organisms in blood and other body fluids will be transmitted from the client to other individuals. The isolation guidelines contain a two-tiered approach. The first is the standard precaution. Some agencies may use an earlier term, UP, or universal precaution, reflecting their applicability in all client care situations. The standard precautions are meant to reduce the risk of transmission of bloodborne and other pathogens from both recognized and unrecognized sources. The standard precaution, therefore, is indicated for use for the care of all hospitalized patients regardless of their diagnosis or presumed infection status. When a patient comes in for care, regardless that patient is known to be infectious or not, the standard precaution is used. In addition, it is used in any situation involving blood, all body fluids, excretions, and secretions except sweat, whether or not blood is present or visible, non-intact skin, and mucous membrane. It is assumed by the second bullet that all body fluids except sweat should be viewed as sources of infection. Key elements of the standard precaution include hand hygiene, use of PPE, respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette, prevention of needle stick and injuries from other sharp instruments, patient care equipment, and proper patient placement. Hand hygiene involves cleaning your hands by using either Hand washing with soap and water, antiseptic hand wash, antiseptic hand rub, or surgical hand antisepsis. Do you know which of these is the preferred method for cleaning your hands in most clinical situations? Alcohol-based hand sanitizers are the most effective products for reducing the number of germs on the hands of healthcare providers. It is also the preferred method for cleaning your hands in most clinical situations. There are conditions where the use of an alcohol-based hand sanitizer is preferred and there are conditions wherein the use of soap and water in hand washing is preferred. Use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer immediately before touching a patient, before performing an aseptic technique or handling invasive medical devices, before moving from work on a soiled body site to a clean body site on the same patient, after touching a patient or the patient's immediate environment, after contact with blood, body fluids, or contaminated surfaces, and immediately after glove removal. Hand washing with soap and water is recommended when the hands are visibly soiled. After caring for a person with known or suspected infectious diarrhea, and after known or suspected exposure to spores, example include Bacillus anthracis and Clostridium difficile outbreaks. In using alcohol based hand sanitizer, put product on hands and rub hands together to cover all surfaces until hands feel dry. This should take around 20 seconds. For hand washing with soap and water, wet your hands first with water, apply the amount of product recommended by the manufacturer to your hands, and rub your hands together vigorously for at least 15 seconds to cover all surfaces of the hands and finger. Other entities have recommended that cleaning your hands with soap and water should take around 20 seconds. Rinse your hands with water and use disposable towel to dry. Use towel to turn off the faucet. Avoid using hot water. All healthcare providers must apply PPE or personal protective equipment according to the risk of exposure to potentially infective materials. Personal protective equipments include clean or sterile gloves, gowns, masks, and protective eyewear. Wear gloves when it can be reasonably anticipated that contact with blood or other potentially infectious materials, mucous membranes, non-intact skin, or potentially contaminated intact skin could occur. Remove gloves after contact with the patient and or surrounding environment using proper technique to prevent hand contamination. Do not wear the same pair of gloves for the care of more than one patient 
and do not wash gloves for the purpose of reuse. Also, change gloves during patient care if the hands will move from a contaminated body site to a clean body site. For example, when moving from the perineal area to the face. Wear a gown that is appropriate to pass to protect the skin and prevent soiling or contamination of clothing during procedures and patient care activities when contact with blood, body fluids, secretions, or excretions is anticipated. Wear a gown for direct patient contact if the patient has uncontained secretions or excretions. And of course, do not reuse gowns even for repeated contacts with the same patient. Routine donning of gowns upon entrance into a high-risk unit such as the ICU or the NICU is not indicated. For your mouth, nose, and eye protection, select masks, goggles, face shields, and combinations of each according to the need anticipated by the task performed. They are used during procedures and patient care activities that are likely to generate splashes or sprays of blood, body fluid, secretions, and excretions. The WHO stipulates that the following procedures are aerosol generating, intubation, non-invasive positive pressure ventilation, tracheotomy, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, bronchoscopy, and sputum induction. What this slide implies is that when assisting in these procedures, you must wear mouth, nose, and eye protection. One of the very important concepts here is that you must don your PPE in sequence. This is an image from the Centers for Disease Control illustrating the proper sequence for donning PPE. We must wear the gown first, and then the mask or respirator, the goggles or face shield, and then finally the gloves. A very easy way to memorize the sequence is to imagine a man with his hands raised. Then imagine donning the PPE from bottom to the top. Start by covering the body with the gown, and then the mouth and nose with the mask, followed by eye protection with goggles, and lastly the gloves. Very easy, right? How about the sequence for doffing PPE? This image by the Centers for Disease Control illustrates the proper sequence for doffing PPE. We first remove the gloves, the goggles, the gown, and then the mask or respirator. I use the mnemonic DOF alphabetically to remember the sequence. First the three Gs, but GLO comes first in the alphabet before GOG, before GOW. Therefore, that would be gloves, goggles, and then gown. And lastly, the letter M for mask. The respiratory hygiene is an infection prevention measure designed to limit the transmission of respiratory pathogens spread by droplet or airborne routes. It involves covering the mouth and nose when sneezing or coughing, proper disposal of tissues, and separating potentially infected individuals from others by at least 1 meter or 3 feet or having them wear a surgical mask. This is an image from the Centers for Disease Control clearly illustrating the respiratory hygiene. To emphasize in image 1, cover your mouth and nose with a tissue paper when you cough or sneeze. And if you don't have a tissue paper, cough or sneeze into your upper sleeve as shown in the illustration. Please use needles and other sharps directly into puncture-resistant containers as soon as their use is completed. Remember again that sharps containers are color-coded red. Do not attempt to recap needles or place sharps back in their sheets using two hands. Using two hands can result in a needle stick puncture injury if the nurse accidentally misses the cover. Use the one-hand scoop technique or other safety device. Do not overfill sharps containers. Handle client care equipment that is soiled with blood, body fluids, secretions, or excretions carefully to prevent the transfer of microorganisms to others and to the environment. Make sure reusable equipment is cleaned and reprocessed correctly. Lastly, dispose of single-use equipment correctly. Handle all soiled linens as little as possible. Do not shake it and bundle it up with clean side out and dirty side in and hold away from self 
so that the nurse uniform or clothing is not contaminated. Place patients who pose a risk for transmission to others in a single patient room when available. When a single room is not available, there are some considerations for cohorting or rooming in patients together. Consider the client's diagnosis and the presence or absence of infection. For obvious reasons, a patient without an infection should not be roomed in with a patient with an infection. Even in infectious patients, they must only be roomed in together if they have the same infection or are infected with the same microorganism. Infectious clients are considered dirty while post-operative clients are considered clean. Therefore, they must never be roomed in together. So let us summarize. The standard precaution is used in all patients regardless of infectious status. As a nurse, you must know when to practice hand hygiene and when to use alcohol-based hand rubs or soap and water. Know when to use PPE as well as the correct sequence of donning and doffing. Advise patient to practice correct cough etiquette. Practice safe injection practices and appropriate needles and sharps disposal. Practice proper handling and disposal of client care equipment. And place patient in single room and cohort appropriately if single room is not available. Pause this video, gather your thoughts, and when you are ready, let us have a practice test. For the first question, when hands are visibly soiled, hand hygiene must be performed using A, alcohol-based hand rubs, or B, soap and water. You have 5 seconds. If you answered B, soap and water, you are correct. In donning, which must be worn first? A, mask, B, gloves, C, goggles, D, gown. You have 5 seconds. And the correct answer is D, gown. Remember the man with his hands raised. In doffing, which must be removed last? A. Mask B. Gloves C. Goggles D. Gown You have 5 seconds. Remember our mnemonic that we must doff alphabetically. That is, we must remove first the gloves, followed by the goggles, and then the gown. And lastly, and the correct answer for this question is A. Mask. In cohorting, which patient or patients is or are considered dirty? A. A postoperative patient. B. A patient with infection. C. Patient without infection. Or D. All of the above. You have 5 seconds. And the correct answer is B. A patient with infection. If you answered all four questions correctly, then you did a great job. If not, you may rewind the video to review your answers. That ends the slide set on the standard precaution. Please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, MemoryAid-Nursing. Thank you.